the podcast that does back shots is is mm-hmm. pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think I think the thing is we have to you know we we just have to be reminded that why would we want to sleep with our listeners who are the worst people on the or the worst people on God's green earth. Yeah, the well, there's yeah. your problem. Fuck a fan contest. Um, has as yet still been, not chosen a been winner. Been derailed. Yeah. It has. It, it was. It was canceled uh, before it existed. Oh, I'm not updating my drivers in video. Not again. <laughs> <laughs> last time I did that, I got disconnected from the Zencaster. Not again. Yeah. Not again, Nvidia. Did, did you try and fucking update your graphics card drivers in the middle of a recording? I have done that before, and I lied to you and said I got disconnected when I knew exactly what had happened. <laughs> Can, can we install some kind of like work bomb surveillance <laughs> technology? Yeah, bomb collar. Uh, this is the reason. This is one reason why I have one monitor. Right, it's because the second I get a second monitor, I know that I have gone to one monitor as well. I've gone to one monitor as well for for basically. Mm-hmm. You know, I I like the idea of having two monitors. I have had two, three, four monitor setups in the past, but I have. If I have two monitors, I'm just going to play Warzone in the background while we're trying to record. Yeah, yeah. Me, me me, and my possible ADHD do not get along well with uh, doing work and then having something else. My phone's bad enough. You know? My phone's bad enough, right, exactly. Um, I, I will say that Roz has two monitors. I don't know how he does it. Um, because I need two monitors so I can show the slides and read the notes. Mm. Also, uh, a d- different kind of neurodivergence from us. Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 buddy. It's fine, Ross. We love you very dearly. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. Um, hello and welcome Hi. to. <laughs> well, where's your problem? It's a podcast about engineering disasters with slides. Here we are again. I'm, I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who's talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. Okay, go. I'm November Kelly. I'm the person who's talking now. My pronouns are she and her. The new name is not a joke. Uh, just thought I would reinforce that for the first few times that I say it. It's real. I named myself after a month. Yay, Liam. Yeah. Yay, Liam. And thank you, November. I have to say November about a trillion times. The thing is, right, I'm, I'm going to terrorize you because I have a drop of yeah, like uh, John McClane <laughs> from Die Hard going, and I'm going to use that any time you get the name wrong. So, you know, just just be aware of that. I, I I actually do appreciate that. Uh, and we're stepping down from the bomb collar, so I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Liam Anderson. My pronouns are he and him, and I exist to uh, agonize Roz. Hmm. See, we're 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 gonna have a a, a situation here in November. Yeah. Because okay, Liam two syllables. Sure. Justin two syllables. Mm-hmm. Devin two syllables. November. Yeah, although Three activate, activate Windows, activate Windows yeah. logo is uh, like, yeah. <laughs> what is that? What, what, I don't have to talk. I don't how, have to talk to how, them that much. How? Though. How? Mm. How? Roz, I'm gonna baby. have to change my cadence entirely. Roz, baby. Roz, baby. <laughs> hey, Roz. What? Why? Why? Why do you have to activate Windows again? Um, I don't know. Roz. I have a license, I just don't know where it is. <laughs> yeah, try telling that to the fucking highway trooper. I I got busted once in uh outside of Breezewood, Pennsylvania, oh doing boy. like a hundred and ten. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have my license. And mm-hmm. the state trooper's like license registration, and I said to him, I got one, and he I was like, This is it, this is it, this I'm gonna have a service weapon discharged into me. Mm-hmm. For bad joke. <laughs> uh, don't don't speed in a two thousand Jeep Cherokee, kids. That's my that's my motorist advice. Mm. It's cool that you have a whole subclass of cop who are just like highways, uh, and also like state level stuff, and they all have to wear stupid little costumes that some little governor hats. designed in the twenties <laughs> yeah. that like all look remarkably fascist. Yeah, you I can, can't it, imagine it, what that's about. Do they enjoy wearing the hats, or are they you like know this they is a do stupid the hat? I think, I think they love it. I think they're yeah. polishing the like Sam Brown belts every day of their fucking life. I think it makes their day. Which, Actually, to be honest, yeah, you know, I understand. Um, Pencil. Uh, I... Hey, but the thing is, the the invention of like state police's highway patrols are uh, historically progressive in that it uh, was often a way of centralizing it against private polices, like the um, uh, the Pennsylvania Coal and Iron Police. Um, oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, we, uh, you're obliged as as a Marxist Leninist to offer critical support to state troopers. Look at all these dead troopers. With, 
We've caught you with counterfeit coal and iron. <laughs> no, it's more Stop like resisting. It's, it's, it's more like uh, you, you want to go on strike, so we're going to shoot you kind of vibes. Uh, right. Yeah. Mm. Well, what do you see on the screen in front of you? There was a trooper who tried to drive from York to Lancaster with a BAC of 0. 0.144. Don't do that. The, the worst the worst state trooper thing I've ever seen was was on Reddit, right? Which oh, is yeah. uh, automatically the worst. No, no, no. A, a, a guy came into the like America subreddit or whatever. And he's like, I'm driving. I'm doing a road trip coast to coast. My English isn't that great. I'm kind of worried about getting pulled over. If I get pulled over by a state trooper, is there something I should like do, right? It's something I should know about. And one of the comments was, it's considered polite to ask, do you want a bridge named after you? And I think that's <laughs> maybe one of the most sadistic things I've ever seen done on God's internet. <laughs> All right. That's, that's good. Good. Let's let's talk about a, a ship that killed a bunch of people. What you see in front of you is a ship. Mm, she it looks, rusty. Looks pretty rough. Yeah. This is the MV. That's motor vessel, mm. Donya Paz. Nice. That's it's better, a ferry. It's better than I thought you were going to do. Yeah, you got, he got I, the Enya. I, I, I know. I know what an Enya is. <laughs> I don't. I put one in. I put one in N de M. Like I. I <laughs> <laughs> the Nacional de Mexico. <laughs> the Cat Girl Railroad. Yeah, the Cat Girl Railroad, exactly. Now, this big ferry looks pretty ugly. Nothing oh. fundamentally wrong with it, except for a lot of things we're Look. about to talk about. Oh. <laughs> this, is, this is one of the ones where we don't have a photo of it going wrong. No. This being no, a boat, I imagine a photo of it going wrong is just going to be a photo of the ocean. There's a lot of there's there's a lot of reasons for that we'll get into. I see. Um, if you if you're a person who watches these episodes but isn't happy when a lot of people die in the episode, Ooh. this episode is not for you. Oh boy. Yeah, this is, this, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we we didn't revise the news uh, that we had. It's slightly I, out of date, but you I, know what? It's fine. You don't come to us fine. for breaking news. Yeah, yes, I exactly. do want to say I. Uh, uh, should we talk about Next Benedict and just uh, condemn the state of Oklahoma for existing and the horrendous evils no, they have brought upon us? I, I don't even know what to say anymore. Um, right. the, the, the crimes of this guilty nation shall only be purged with blood, you know? Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I, I just wanted, because I, I know that we would normally get, hey, where was this? I do want to say, yes, we know. Mm. We, we are at a loss of what to say other than, you know what, I don't care, bleep this or not, uh, go to the state of Oklahoma, find the superintendent of schools, find lives with TikTok, find her house. I th I th I th isn't that a guy and isn't he making like videos in his car about- Superintendent porn? of Oklahoma, yes, but lives with TikTok is a woman. Oh, right? oh, sorry, yeah. I confused yeah. two no, people. No, you don't worry, that. you guys, you guys, hey, you know, you guys want to do that, uh, that's cool. That's that's fine. This Devin's is gonna, be a gonna long bleep this all. Devin's gonna yeah. bleep this all at the end. Yeah. anyway, mm -hmm. they'll probably yeah. just excise the whole thing. But I I'm pissed off, and I I think we should go to their house. And yeah, I I I really and truly don't know what to tell you. What is there to say? I mean, what is there to say other than rest in power, yeah. and you deserve better. Yeah. Leave that specific part in and bleep. Everything else. I wanted yes. to sound like Morse code, Devin. <laughs> All right. Um, so first, we have to do the goddamn news. Oh dear. Oh, I remember this. Oh yeah, yeah hey, we were gonna the, uh, we were gonna fix that, right? Yeah, the huge the huge uh, accident that was supposed to shake the railroad industry to its core. Um, yeah. East Palestine wreck about a year ago, oh, as fuck, of when I've... this episode was supposed to come out. I've just, uh, I've just thought of the perfect joke for the Chiron, and it's too late to put it in. What was it? It was going to be no consequences for bombing Palestine, and then the next slide was going to be no consequences, no consequences for, bombing for bombing Palestine. Palestine. Yeah, actually, yeah, that would be pretty good. Yeah, but we didn't um, do that, so we can't do it. So just imagine it in your head. Yeah, you know? please. Yeah. So. You know, it, it's sort of like, okay, we had this massive, like, earth-shaking train wreck that was supposed to change everything. We're about a yeah, year Pete now. Buttigieg out now. talked about it, even. Yeah. Uh, 
nothing has really happened. No. Um, you know, it's been it's been largely just inaction. Um, you know, these railroads are still uh, you know, they're making record profits, but you know, there's not great safety. Uh it still um you still have all these practices like precision scheduled railroading, which you know are making trains longer, more difficult to control. Um you still have lots of instances of management intimidating workers when they try to do their job, like say inspecting bearings, because mm-hmm. that might delay the train. Of course. You know, you also have folks like the locomotive engineers, they're not allowed to do their jobs because their job is now fighting with the computer that wants to drive the train for them. Um, you know, but what people used to think Airbus was is what uh, trip optimizer <laughs> is. Um, <laughs> Die by wire. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, like, it really did seem for a minute like something, or at least the appearance of something, was going to be done. Like you, the the fucking the failing New York Times got you to to write about it even, and like uh, yeah, in and then nothing. Like nothing. everyone just kind of got bored, I guess. Right. There's there's like um I mean there's been there were a series of news articles that sort of came out during the first six months of last year, which is sort of like okay. The, the workers won this and this and this and this. And a lot of them are sort of paper victories as far as I can mm. tell. Um, you know, because especially with the the time off, the sick days and stuff like that. They had that before on paper. Now they have more on paper, but can you <laughs> actually use them? Yeah. Trail, you know, I mean, yeah. like, I, I, I don't know. I, it feels sometimes like Americans have like a kind of intellectual lacuna about trains where... It, it just kind of like slides off the American mind unless you are a train person. Yes. Um, yes. Like, it, and this I, this applies I, I to like the, successive the like guys, secretaries of transportation. You know, it just it doesn't hold attention. Yeah, I mean, uh, and we're not nearly in the place we were like back in the seventies when um, the Louisville and Nashville railroad would blow up a town like this, you know, twice a year. But um, <laughs> getting there. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. You know, uh, <laughs> that so, old times feeling. You know, yeah. So you know, this is uh, the, the situation is still bad. And even if you're, you know, you're a railroad worker, you're a person who enjoys trains, or you ride passenger trains, or you know, even if you're a, a railroad town customer, that has a <laughs> railroad through, yeah, it or near it. Yeah, this should this should be something that interests you. You know. You are Secretary of Transportation. Yeah, you are Secretary of Transportation. So, you you know, in terms of, I guess, is there anything you can do? I'm confused. It does sound like uh, the Railroad Workers United, uh, you know, sort of a cross-craft caucus of uh, railroad workers is doing some kind of big campaign this year. I don't know any of the specifics on it. Um, You can become a sustaining member, even if you're not a... uh, a railroad worker. So if you want to, you know, throw money at the problem, that's one way to do it. I'll put a link in the description to that. Nice. But um, yeah, well the uh, uh, you know, the only solution here is and has been since at least World War One to just nationalize Mobilize the whole the thing. Railroads. One big railroad, you know, mm-hmm. one <laughs> sure. big railroad. Yeah, because as long as you're as long as you're chasing the uh, operating ratio down to you know sixty fifty percent. You're not going to have room for things like really basic safety, safety checks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. So yeah, that that's our East Palestine retrospective, and there's still folks in uh, in East Palestine who are um uh still trying to get out of the town because it's it's just you know there's still enough contamination that is causing health problems. Jeez. It's not everyone, but it's still a number of people. Mm. Um. <laughs> Real bad. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. Um, well, in other news, hey, we got some good news. Intersperse. We have some good news. Yes, the man, the man who did to country music what pantyhose did to finger fucking has died. Yes. Uh, <laughs> if if you are if you are frustrated at country music, uh, it's being his all fault. about trucks, uh, it's this guy Toby Keith's fault. 
Yeah, he is not dead and in trucks, the ground. And my guns and truck and truck gun. gun it's also not eleven. My fault, gun, my gun that shoots trucks. Mm-hmm. Oh, the I troops, think that's trucks, gun, America troops, gun. Truck. Yeah, gun, I, I gun really like that. Uh, that shoot I, guns. I really like the. Uh, I'm gonna fucking punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I I really liked uh, uh, his line about uh, in Red Solo Cup. He's like, um, like talking about how foreclosable his home was. It was like Toby Keith, you're a, you're a gajillionaire. Please stop. I am relatable, and he's relatable because he's dead now. Yeah, the thing, the thing Beer is, for my he, horse is still slaps, but he 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 died as he lived, being a fucking asshole. Um, if if you are concerned about the state of country music, uh, we have a bonus Patreon a bonus. episode. You can subscribe to the Patreon. You can go and listen to it. Yeah, we we talk, we trace how country music became reactionary. Yeah, it's fun. Oh, also, I love this bar. Still slaps. Sorry. <laughs> What did should have been a die of shame? stomach cancer. Oh, should have oh. been a cowboy sl- a slaps. Uh, there's some good. There's there's some good songs in there. It's just like oh, and well, I want to talk about me. If, 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 if you have a talent, and then you use that talent for evil. That's kind of worse. You yes. know. Yes. Yes. Ask me how I play Magic the Gathering. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are the Toby Keith of Magic the Gathering. I am. I I don't think Toby Keith. I love this bar and grill. Still has any uh, locations left. Oh, this is a shame. shame. Me- uh, meanwhile, fuck it, it cleared by Margaritaville. Jimmy yeah. Buffett is has like wiped the floor with this guy. R.I.P. Yes. Jimmy Buffett. R.I.P. <laughs> Jimmy <laughs> Buffett. From, from beyond the grave, Jimmy Buffett shot this guy with a cancer. Gun. Oh, there's still two in Oklahoma. Roz, you got to go to uh, Oklahoma City with me, bud. Oh, fun. Yeah, but we got to go like, to. There's to- like fucking Japanese conscript still fighting the World War Two in like the seventies. You know, Just news yeah, but- has not reached Oklahoma yet. Given what you said about going to Oklahoma earlier, I'm worried about what might happen when we're, we get crimes, <laughs> hundreds of crimes. Yeah, oh, yeah the, sort of the the dual purpose road trip where you go and visit Toby Keith's restaurants and commit a number of heinous crimes. Yeah, which are <laughs> entirely justified in doing. By the way, sorry, let entire- me take that again. It's like natural born killers with worse food. Call it out. I, I uh, want the pro- politically big do- motivated I want the- ass. <laughs> I want the big dog daddy prime rib. <laughs> I, I, please don't ever say those words in that order to me or anyone ever again. <laughs> big dog daddy prime rib? Hell yeah. I, I, I'm safe. Well, 14 know. ounces for $35 is fucking rip off. I, I can go to Great American Saloon in Red Lion, Pennsylvania and get a much better deal. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay, I have just a word to the FBI. I'm not going to do any of these crimes. Oh, yes, I can't he is. speak for yes, Liam. Yes, he is. He is going to do them. <laughs> Guess what? You're all accessories, too. <laughs> I mean, I'm the only one here who isn't a U.S. citizen, so I'm the only one who can be subject to like warrantless surveillance from U.S. intelligence agencies. And thank God for that, because it would make the tax bill a lot harder to figure out. Yeah. <laughs> I pay taxes, and I'm just like, if we, if they ever come for us, I'm just like, yeah, I'll also figure that out. That's fine. She's yeah. not a U.S. citizen. Oh, oh November. Wait, 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 November. Wait, 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 wait. November. Yes. Yes, I'm sorry. Fuck, I keep dropping this, Eric. In other news, uh, uh, speaking of crimes. No. There we oh go. My fucking God. Because, uh, I, because I, want I have the next fucking, location. Like, I know. On I the, know. Je- on the Kill James Bond you. preset. And I have to uh, remember to switch it back uh, to. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. uh, okay. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you want to. Take us away. Ross. World world historical crimes continue. Yeah, real yes. bad. Um, I guess oh, we Israel... had to read. We had to read a fucking history book, though. According to that one guy who gave us a one fucking star review. I mean, this is the yeah. thing, right? People blow me from the will, back. Will always, always tell you like, and it, it's the same with like any trans thing, or really a lot of things. People make a real fetish out of complexity, and they'll be like. It's so complicated. You don't know enough to be able to say anything about this. This genocide is genocide new- bad. That's all I need. It's it's a nuanced debate, and you have to like approach it with care and sensitivity. First of all, when have we ever in our lives approached anything with care and sensitivity? Yeah, we don't Second do that here. <laughs> all, uh, what what you are doing when you take that line of argument is you are pissing down my back and telling me it's raining. Uh, because if you if you have eyes to see, you can see that this is a genocide in the making, and that this is uh. A very bad thing genocides are, uh, and that it must be stopped. Right? Um, 
Yeah, and and so uh, essentially the the most recent thing, I, if somehow you haven't been following the conflict, essentially uh, Israel has been playing a whack a mole with the entire Gaza population. Mm-hmm. You know, they tell them to, they they tell them to go to Khan Yunus, they bomb Khan Yunus. They tell them to go to what was the the thing in between? It was oh, like an yeah. empty lot somewhere. They told two million people to go to. Yeah, that's the humanitarian zone up in the top left. I think it's called Al Mawasi. Um, uh, okay, they tell them to like Al Mawasi. They bomb Al Mawasi. Yeah, they've they also bombed them, that. They tell them to go to Rafa. It looks like in the next week or so they're going to bomb Rafa. Yeah, uh, you know, so, bad enough. The Egyptians seem to be expecting some kind of colossal humanitarian uh, humanitarian calamity, and they've actually started leveling ground out here where they think they're going to have to build the refugee camp. Yeah. Um, you know, because at some point really you're just going to cause a human crush against the wall, you know, kill mm. 100,000 people and then the wall falls over and people climb over the, the mounds. But, you know, this is the sort of thing you're looking at if they mm. go through with it. Yeah, that's, um, that's, that's the goal. That's explicitly the goal. Uh, it's always been the goal. Uh, Rafa has a population of uh, like a hundred thousand. Normally, it's now up to like one point two million because everybody has been forced into this like one town that like abuts the border with Egypt. Um, and so now it seems like people are finally reading the polls in uh, in Europe and in the U.S. And so now Biden realizing that he's like gonna lose Michigan, circling the is, train, right? Yeah. Is 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 like. Well, the the Israelis shouldn't attack Rafa, um, and you, you know, like a lot of European countries are saying the same. And of course, Netanyahu, being who he is, is like, no, fuck you, we are going to do it anyway. And there's no reason to doubt that, you know. Yeah, I, I, this looks. I mean, they they probably already have the weaponry to do it. It's just gonna, of course, yeah. You know, they're yeah. gonna do. They're they're just gonna do like a world historic uh, war, crime. war crime. You know, mm-hmm. it's. And it's gonna it, it it it's 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 gonna look bad. It's you know I I don't exactly know even like okay keep going to protests keep going to all this stuff. I don't know yeah. exactly what you do to stop this though. I I mean the the only thing you can meaningfully do is cut off their aid and sanction yes. them, and that you can only really do that if you are Joe Biden. So if 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 you're listening, Joe, which we know you are, Joe. Yeah. Fucking get on that, please. Um, otherwise, I mean, look, I don't want to demoralize people, and I don't want to say right, that the course. protesting is useless, right? Because it's not. There's a lot of like important stuff being done to try and like shut down, uh, like Elbit factories, for instance, or try to get like individual countries to stop supplying weapon parts. Uh, you know, uh, like the. The Dutch had to like suspend this for a while because you know, and stop shipping F thirty five parts to Europe because, um, uh, to Europe to to Israel because uh, you know, they might be used for a breach of international humanitarian law, which transparently they would be. Um, uh, historically, so, labor action has been very effective here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it it just, I don't know. I, I again, right for the second time. In, in one news segment, I'm just kind of at a loss. Um, yeah, and I'm not. It's, I'm, yeah. I don't think I'm yeah. at a loss because there is nothing to be done. It's just that it exceeds my ability to fucking discern what it is. Oh, we right? know what should be done, and you know too, listener. And Devin, don't bleep that. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I, I, I just, as a Jewish person, it's just like mm. this. This. This is. This is the most infuriating. Not literally. This is the most infuriating thing. Like, obviously, the most infuriating thing is that heinous genocide and war crimes are being committed in my name. Yeah. It's the, it's the, the bizarro world evolution of, of the centrists and, and conservatives who are like, oh, you hate the Jews. And it's like, motherfucker, I, listen, A, I am Jewish. B, I hate them for my own reasons. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. you get, you get told to study Torah long enough, you get pissed off. And it's just like, yeah, man, I mean, what, like I've said this on the show before, when you when you've lost my mother, I I, I can't believe you're doing the right thing anymore. Yeah. Not that I believe that Israel was ever doing the right thing, but you know what I mean. Um, it, it really is like a sea change in terms of like, right? And you're gonna lose, and we're gonna get Trump again, and he, that's gonna be 
What? The same. The same, yeah. maybe? Yeah, because, like, same. what more yeah, can yeah. we actually do? Like, yeah. in terms of what more can we actually do to keep funding? Like, we, we, we can't, you know, I'm sure we'll find a way to double time a genocide. But I don't know how that works yet. A bunch of a bunch of other stuff will be worse, and then this will be as bad. You know, right, right. This does seem like the uh, the implication here is that okay, we move all the Palestinians from Rafa to other Rafa, and everything will be fine. Yeah, you know. Yeah, Yeah, listen. if, If you have one impenetrable border fence, and then Hamas like surge over it and kill indiscriminately, right? Pushing them back behind a second. Impenetrable border fence means that it's never going to happen again. Yeah, I'm pretty certain. Yeah, um, and you know it's not like they'll be irritated because this side has this side has the electricity and the water pipes, and this side has nothing. Um, yeah, this, is, this is this is desert. Um, yeah, this, this is, is not this... tenable. Right. Yeah. I mean, if 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 nothing else, like, and and this is as a lever. This is part of why. Uh, Israel is doing this is to make people make these kinds of calculations is to say that like at least if every Palestinian is in Egypt they won't be getting bombed as you like uh-huh. deliver uh-huh. humanitarian aid to them but the reason why that's a thing that anyone has to think about is because Israel is bombing the humanitarian convoys right yes it's it's pure fucking evil i mean i don't know what else we can say about it yeah i don't do genocide know. is is yeah. my advice yeah. And especially don't do genocide in my fucking name, you pricks. I I still believe that we will see an end to uh Israeli apartheid within my lifetime. Yes. Um, uh once again, throw my name out there for a Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> uh, we're gonna yeah, have we're, one we're gonna be the ones to do it. We're gonna one country yeah. called country, mm-hmm. one con mm-hmm. line called language, <laughs> one currency called Liam Bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, I don't know. Whatever kind of like, deputy minister for peace, November Kelly. That's right. Whatever kind of like city in the city bullshit that that has to be done to to resolve this in anything like a kind of peaceful and equitable manner uh, should should happen. But like, I I I do think that ultimately this is best understood as like the death throes of a kind of fascist state right it it might seem like it's uh extremely powerful and extremely unaccountable but i think this is ultimately like laying the sort of groundwork for for the destruction of apartheid as it as it is in israel yes we can pray and hope and work towards that and we should inshallah yes you know yes from the Uh, river to the sea and also uh mm -hmm. and also uh Get the fuck out of here if you're mad at me. From yeah, the river absolutely. to the sea, get the fuck out of here if you're mad at me is actually pretty good. <laughs> that's, good. Well, yeah. that's, gonna, that's actually on the flag. <laughs> just, <laughs> just be increasingly small font. <laughs> just like, uh, you know, the, the flag is um, like black impact font text on white field, and it starts with that, and it goes to like, uh, I'm tired of these jokes about my text laden flag. The first such instance was uh, in 1947 when and just continues on like that. <laughs> was it? I never know how to say the name. V- vexillology? Yeah, vexillology. Yeah. Vexillology, yeah, I love those fucking nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. On that happy note, that was the goddamn news. Huh. Alright. We're gonna talk about a different part of the world. It's the Philippines, folks. Huge fan of these guys. Um, great literature, uh, great like anti-colonial resistance tradition, uh, some fucking weird Catholic stuff. Um, yes, really you, weird Catholic yeah, stuff. But you repeat yourself. Yeah, be- beautiful country. Love to yeah. go sometime. Uh, it's uh, uh, it, it's the location of Manila, the yep. famed uh, place where the thriller happened. Yes, I knew that joke was coming too. Yeah, <laughs> hive mind. <laughs> So yeah, the Philippines, they're in um, you know, the South China Sea. They're a bunch of mountain they're a bunch of islands that have mountains on them, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, you colonized by uh the Spanish, then the Americans, um, and uh this yeah, I actually I don't know a lot about the Philippines or Filipino history. I, I actually don't know a lot either. It's it's sort of something where I I I just I 
it, it's a part of the world which I had never really. I don't know uh, much hold, about Southeast Asia. Hold on, hold on. Oh, God. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna sort this out here, right? Uh, oh yes. I, the, well, I, I, listen, I'll say one thing about the Philippines, right? Which is the oh, Philippines, boy. officially the Republic of the Philippines, God damn is an it, archipelagic November. country in Southeast Asia. Uh, it, it consists of seven thousand six hundred and forty-one islands with a total area of three hundred thousand square kilometers. Um, and those are broadly categorized into three main geographical divisions, uh, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Yes, that. Okay. Cool. You know, uh, this, this is an area that's been inhabited for thousands of years, but, you know, the sort of modern history happen, does, does, seem to, uh, <laughs> does seem to start with colonization. You know, yeah, right? I mean, I, I, I kind of understand it to be like it, it's both fortunately and unfortunately located. Um, yeah, in that it, it is like a sort of choke point for trade in South Asia uh, or Southeast Asia, and therefore routinely got kicked around by everybody, like the yeah. Spanish, you, the Japanese, Roz uh, personally. Yeah, statistically, <laughs> probably us at some point. Uh, the colony, like, the colony of Roztopia. Yeah, hold Everyone. on. We're gonna find out. Br Britain invasion Philippines. <laughs> I'm pretty certain. Probably did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Of course, we fucking did. We occupied Manila for when? 18 months. Uh, 1762. Oh, I see that. Yeah. The British first week of April, 1764. Yeah. Oh. It's also, a relatively densely populated country. I mean, there's a lot of people. And these, since it's a lot of islands, they got to get between the different islands. Mm. And even within the same islands, because there's mountains, you got to go around the mountains. Well, the mountains go right up to the edge of the islands, so you need boats. Mm -hmm. Right? You right. know, because you, you can't build, you can't build bridges. The yeah. sea is too deep. You don't yeah. have enough money to do a crazy system of tunnels like the Faroe Islands. Yeah, you're, you're um, not sort of like hiking up over a like 70 yeah. degree incline cast slope. Uh, and then hiking yeah. back down the other side, you know? Not a lot of room for airports either, so you do boats. Hmm. Very strong maritime tradition in the Philippines. Just a little bit, little bit more context, shipping and travel in the Philippines. You know, a lot of people live there, they got places to go. They have some railroads, they're fragmented and underfunded. Uh, service is not very good. People actually have taken over the rails themselves. They go around in little motorized uh picnic tables that go on a railroad Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Huge. yeah the, the, the ancap railroad yes um actually i think uh, a lot of the railroads have been improved fairly recently but these these little uh the carts still work um mm, good the highway system is full of gaps because of all the water right so you have a bunch of ferries um some of the ferries are fairly modern some of them are not um, I think some of them are privatized, some of them are not. Oh, um, some of these ferry trips are 15 minutes long, and some of them are two days long. Fuck me. Um, uh, yeah, no as, thanks. As, as I understand it, <laughs> Filipino government is in this, as with a few areas of policy, like, kind of decentralized and chaotic. So it's just, like, provincial? Yeah, a bit, bit like Britain in that way. Okay. Yeah, I've um, seen Roz on a ferry. It, it was just on, on, on the <laughs> on the Avanti West Coast ferry from yep. Liverpool Lime Street to Mindanao. It was all of the windows we were are there. welded <laughs> shut. I'm broiling to fucking death. We had an interior cabin, and it didn't go so good for us. We just got Not drunk. So good. I think. Yeah, mm. I, I like a boat. And apart from when they like stop, when a boat's underway, that's pretty good. And even in like heavy weather, rough seas, when a boat's like pitching up and down, I quite like that. That's a good time. Until until it pulls up to the dock and it's just bouncing around at a standstill, and then I get sick. Um, yeah, there's yeah. a great line in the Innocence Abroad where Mark Twain describes how long it takes to get your sea legs on a voyage, and. Uh, you know, it's it's always about exactly eighty percent of the way through. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful locomotive, by the way. What, uh, what is that? This is uh, I want to say this is some kind of General Electric export unit. Mm. It's a U something. It might also be EMD. I'm not good with the export units. It's probably it was so it was either made in Erie, Pennsylvania, or Fort Wayne. I think Fort mm. Wayne. I forget where 
strange sort of American workshop to the world moment where you make these things in Erie and they end up, you know, sort of running a branch line in uh, Cebu for like yeah. 50 years. So they also have these small pump boats. These guys, you know, they're just sort of launches but with outriggers, right? Mm. Sometimes these are used for short inner island transportation, other just, you know, utility boats. And there's a whole bunch of private shipping between the islands for basic goods like food and fuel. We'll talk about fuel later, but everything goes by boats. This is my this is the important thing. Gotcha. Sure. Yeah. The outriggers on this are cool. I mean, that's yeah. literally oh, yeah. like that's a what is that? Like a hardwood that you just like a couple of logs that they've like lashed together. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. It might be fiberglass too. Oh hell yeah. Yeah. So the Donia Paz. Right? Oh boy. Getting right into it, huh? <laughs> yeah. This was built as the Himayuri Maru for service in Japan in 1963. It was 305 feet long, 45 feet in beam, 2,324 gross registered tons. Keep in mind, gross registered ton is volume and not weight. Um, mm-hmm. It was good for 608 passengers. Yeah, gross registered tons is also the sort of metric I use when I'm looking at scales I'm standing on. Me <laughs> too. <laughs> See, I just uh, don't yeah. have a scale. <laughs> yeah, I, I tend not to use it. I want to point out that Toby Key's Bar and Grill has a drink called the Crimson and Cream, Ooh. which is pineapple and coconut rum, pineapple juice, OJ, strawberry puree, and whipped cream. Oh. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's, I, I'm closing the tab. I'm closing the tab. <laughs> sort of rainbow, rainbow vomit arc. Yeah, you know? yeah. I, uh, he's trying to do Margaritaville, but not quite doing it. I don't think dead, he can do so. Margaritaville in um. He doesn't in, have uh, to like Oklahoma g- City. Gentleness of soul required right. yeah. to be in right. We went to Atlanta, uh, the Atlantic City Margaritaville, and we had a time. Yeah, Liam had the most disgusting drink I've ever seen. Yeah, it was it was gnarly. I liked it. <laughs> I took a sip and retched. You were you were unple- Yeah, you were you yeah. were not happy. I, uh, I I would like to to recommend uh, an Ether article from 2021 called Margaritaville and the Myth of American Leisure. <laughs> I don't want to do reading. I want to get drunk. <laughs> yeah. Well, this so is this- important reading about the getting drunk. Fair enough. Yeah, continue, Roz. Sorry, I do. No, I'm not sorry. Actually, I don't mm-hmm. care. So this was sold on to another company called Sulpicio Lines. This was registered in Manila. For once, it was not a flag of convenience, right? Although it does help. Yeah, it just happens. You don't have to be using this as a flag of convenience to register here, but it helps. Yes. (laughs) Um. So you know this this is a very late sort of streamlined ferry. You know, 1963 is the end times for really cool ship design. You know, in Japan, they had airlines and the Shinkansen starts to eat into these inter-island ferries and intra-island traffic, you know. Um, I'd even see, even though this is not a particularly flattering photo of the boat, you can see some of this nice streamlined modern influence up here. It's got some curves. It's nice. Oh, yeah. I hadn't noticed that, actually. I was too distracted by the rust, but, like, it's it's nice, actually. (laughs) It's actually actually a nice-looking boat, yeah. Um, now, in service in the Philippines, it would have some more severe issues uh, yeah. than just being put out of uh, service. So your, your your beautiful sort of like Shinkansen of the sea is, yes. is sort of like dumped on the Philippines, where it's going to have to like haul stuff back and forth over like one channel for the next forever. So I managed to pull up uh, the website for Sulpicio Lines. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, I love web yeah, design. I know. It's my I know. It's it's uh I love the missing images. This is from Internet Archive, obviously. More, more like more internet should be like this. I'm Good just internet, I'm, yeah. Is that the S from Shrek? Yes. You know how it actually sure looks like it. I think it might actually <laughs> yes, it be is. the S from Shrek. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and if it's not, no one ruin it for me. It's, there is a man. Mm. Solficio Go. He was a Chinese immigrant to the uh, Philippines. And with his sons, he started a shipping company in 1973 with 17 vessels, one tugboat, and five barges. See, this is that kind of like 
you know, immigrant get up and go that makes this country brackets the Philippines great, right? Is yeah, you, it's, you, 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 you immigrate and you start a small business that has you know seventeen ferries, um, right. and then and, rap, and then nothing bad happens to you. And we're, yeah, and, exactly. and we're we're actually recording while there isn't your problem in an alternate <laughs> dimension. Where whatever twenty eight hundred people didn't die. I, I I was just like lead, leading into this with a kind of like nepo baby joke, essentially to be like, yeah, he started from nothing with seventeen. Started, started fairies. from nothing right, with right. seventeen fairies. Yeah, fairies. that apparently it's just that easy to acquire them back then. Everything was cheaper in nineteen seventy three. It's like um, buying AKs in the Soviet Union in like ninety two. Yeah, oh. cost of living is very low. Mm. Um, we're buying NFTs now. Yeah. He got it right after the peak of the market, you know? So yeah. he, he quickly becomes known, you know, Ali's in charge of this company as Don Sulpicio, right? Not as sinister as it sounds in Spanish. Don or Doña just, it just means like it, it can actually convey respect. Yeah, it, it sounds cool. Um, it, it does, it does. Suck. <laughs> I, I would love to be like Doña Noviembre, like yeah. genuinely be insanely cool. Do, Don Liam. Don Justin. I like Don. Oh, yeah. I like that. Mm. So the um the uh this ship in question was originally named for him, Don Sulpicio, right? A little bit vain. Or when it was acquired by the line. Yeah, um, well, it, it trans its damn gender. Yes, it, it did. And like a lot of transitions, it was a process. Um <laughs> so this company got really big very quickly. They purchased this big ship in 1975 as well as a similar sister ship, Doña Marilyn, which we'll briefly mention later in the episode. And they just, as quickly, develop a reputation for overcrowding and lax safety procedures, right? Of course, it's, it's the budget airline of ferries. Yes. So the first thing they do with this ship, it was good for 600 passengers before, they refit it for 1,400 passengers. Everybody sit in somebody's lap. Yes. Don Sulpicio's <laughs> career in the Philippines starts with a bang. In June 1979, the ship caught fire and ran aground. Hell all, yeah. 11, all 1,164 passengers made it off the ship, but the insurers wrote it off. It was completely yeah. gutted by the yeah, fire. That, that, it just like burns sense. to the waterline or whatever. Incredible. Yeah. Oh. Undeterred, Sulpicio what salvages that? the wreck. Oh no! <laughs> changes the name to Doña Paz and puts it back in service. Come so, on, man. Wait, so it, this is like a zombie shit? Like it's this been. Is, it's, rescued it's, from the dead? Yes, and it, tra it, tr it trans its gender in the process. I mean, I, I feel like tra transitioning from dead to alive has a sort of, like, different valence to it, culturally. <laughs> Not that I mean to shame anyone, but I think that is technically a zombie. It's the coming yes. of the trans zombies. <laughs> I mean, it could also be Jesus, I guess. Like but Jesus didn't change his gender, though. Mm, yeah, Though he could have, it would have been a hell of a flex. <laughs> <laughs> I there's there's Pope Francis scheming. <laughs> oh, woke Pope! I love woke. Pope. Yeah, I, <laughs> I I I I look forward to uh, the Pope saying that 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 Jesus was two spirit and just watching the Catholic Shit, man. watching I, the Catholic Church melt down. If 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 he does Vatican three anytime please, soon, he please, might cool he Pope. might legitimately like get me back on the team. Like, yeah, I, yeah, but Vatican III would be a pretty good idea right now. Lacing oh, them back up again. You we know? have you said just, you're just gonna Pope have to Francis, come on the show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For Don Sulpicio so loved the Philippines that he gave his only begotten ship. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, it's Justin. Uh, so this is a commercial for the podcast that you're already listening to. Uh, people are annoyed by these, so let me get to the point. We have this thing called Patreon, right? The deal is, you give us two bucks a month, and we give you an extra episode once a month. Uh, sometimes it's a little inconsistent, but, you know, it's two bucks, you get what you pay for. Um, it also gets you our full back catalog of bonus episodes, so you can learn about exciting topics like guns, pickup trucks, or pickup trucks with guns on them. The money we raise through Patreon goes to making sure that the only ad you hear on this podcast is this one. 
Anyway, that's something to consider if you have two bucks to spare each month. Uh, join at patreon.com forward slash WTYP pod. Do it if you want. Or don't. It's your decision, and we respect that. Back to the show. So here, here's where the bad pronunciation starts. Oh, boy. Um, so this goes from this red dot here, which is Tacloban. Probably. Probably. Sure. On Leyte Island. Sure. Sure, I I don't know. To Manila over here. I'm not 100% certain of the route. There's a little channel here it might be able to go through, or it might have to go all the way around the island. I, I haven't quite fit. I, I never figured that out. Um, But, you know, so it goes through and around and over. It goes up to Manila, right? Um, So the time is 6.30 in the morning. Oh boy. Due in at 8 a.m. the following day. This is already, we're moving very quickly here, right? Yeah. yeah. Also, on December 20th, 1987. Keep in mind, you know, we did a lot of missionary work down there, so everyone's Catholic. Yeah. Everyone's mm -hmm. going home for Christmas. It's not even really like your fault so much as it is the Spanish and Portuguese. Spaniards! Like, this is true. <laughs> it's, it's, it's why they're not just Catholic, but like strange, weird, like, Catholic. Volu yeah. voluntary self crucifixion Catholic. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I. Thanks for nothing. Thanks for losing the 2010 World Cup, you fuckers. And thanks for all the genocide and imperialism. You people are mm -hmm. the worst. I, as an American, of course, am free from sin. Yes, of course. Yeah. So, so Peachy Alliance does the prudent and reasonable thing, and secretly so, overbooks the oh, hell out of the no. ferry. Oh, it's beautiful. Of course. I mean, the, the thing is, those like, margins, baby. Internationally, it's, it, it's always fun going to places where your country was not the colonial power and seeing how people feel about britain but it's about france or about spain <laughs> you, you go to like north africa or whatever and everyone's like yeah britain fine whatever you guys suck too but we really fucking hate these guys um <laughs> because of all of the massacres that they did um so up to four thousand passengers boarded this ship they were on cots and mats in the hallways. You said they were out in tents for, on the deck. It's rated for three. Six, yeah, it's rated for six hundred, and then they uprated it by having people sit on each other's laps to like fourteen hundred. Yeah, and then they put four thousand people on it. Fuck Should be me. fine. Should be fine. Yeah, this may have included something like one thousand kids and a whole battalion of soldiers who boarded at the last minute. Everyone was buying cheap, illegal tickets in cash aboard the ship. Again, mentioning the kind of decentralized and chaotic government, if you're moving your battalion of troops on a commercial ferry last minute paying cash. That, yes. I think says something as well. Well, you know, I I mean, on the other hand, if you, if you worked for the Philippine army at the time, apparently petty cash system, very generous. Yeah, um, <laughs> I the, the Philippine army works on an honor system, you know? <laughs> The best of us all. We will not lie, cheat, or steal, nor tolerate a and cadet who does. Selling illegal tickets on board was a very common practice, but during, during the Christmas travel rush, it was particularly bad. Um, gotcha. Anyway, so this is our first ship. So Heany. this is not the tanker MV Vector. This is just a tanker. If you search for MT Vector, you get a bunch of images of Vector uh, mountains. I, yeah, because yeah, because you can't use Google anymore. Like, yeah, Google the just, it doesn't work anymore. It just yeah, doesn't it doesn't work, and it's flooded with AI bullshit yeah. now, which took about two weeks. You know, like I was telling people, oh, this is going to make the internet unusable, and it has done. Mm -hmm. Torrentleach.org still operating well. Nice. This this uh this tanker is similar to the one involved in the in incident, but I think it's it's smaller. Um, it's it's one cute. Of it's adorable, actually. Yeah, the one in the incident would have been about twice as big, but this is mm. MT here is motor tanker. This is what we got. So shut up. Um, <laughs> I, I do. I do like that all of the shit prefixes are kind of just made up. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. it's the peony. Oh, yeah, the peony. There's, there's no reason why it's like MV rather than MS, um, and then you get a bunch of like different ones. Yeah, motor yeah. tanker. Fine. So MT Vector is just a little guy. He was 170 feet long. 
38 foot beam, 12 feet of draft, 250 horsepower diesel engine, single screw propeller, 629 gross registered tons. Um, has less horsepower than like a modern minivan. My, G- my GTI, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's not please, a massive. Please note like, my GTI is not stock before you try to correct me on fucking horsepower numbers. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like the massive ocean going tankers most people picture when they think of, uh, you know, tanker ships, right? Just a guy. Yeah, this is for hopping mm. from island to island. You know, it's the size of a nice three bedroom apartment. Gotcha. Uh, the, like yeah. the, the gas station on this one, you know, island of a thousand people yeah. needs a refill. Exactly. They and send this guy pipe, like, you, don't, you don't bother building a pipeline to it. You just send one of these guys. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So this is this is like uh, the mission here. This is also known as a product tanker because it's not it's not for transporting oil. It's largely for transporting oil products, you know, gasoline, kerosene, diesel. Right. Gotcha. And so in, in this case, the mission here is to transport 8,800 barrels of those assorted petroleum products, kerosene, gasoline, and diesel, from LeMay, which is just across the bay from Manila, here, to Matspate Island, which is... M- Masbate, I guess? Masbate, I guess. I don't know. Enough. Where is it? Oh, it's one down of, here. One of, these, one of these, like, thousand people islands that has a gas station on it. It has, it has, it has gas station and needs a refill. You have to call a boat. It'll be there in a week. Uh, <laughs> in the meantime, people can walk, <laughs> waiting, waiting for everyone to fill up their like adorable like import minivans. Right. Oh yeah, I love those <laughs> things. They're absolutely like ubiquitous all across Southeast Asia at this point. That's great because they all have like five different brands. So like it's nominally a Toyota, but it's built in China and it's branded as a brand you've never heard before. And yeah, incredible. Hmm. The thing with this kind of tanker is it transports products, not crude oil, and there's much, those products are much more highly refined, and therefore, compared with crude oil, except for certain grades, like back in crude oil, they're more likely to do things like explode. I, I thought the like, gasoline was relatively safe, like, to... Well, as long as it's not, as long as it's not, like, vaporized, yes. I mean, like, you can, you why can those put, big... like, a cigarette out in a puddle of gasoline, right? Like, Yes, but what if that puddle of gasoline has a lot of volatile, uh, uh, gaseous gasoline above it? Then you have a problem. Uh, That's why yeah. all the, the big gasoline tanks have roofs that move up and down with the level of the liquid. Mm. I would simply, like, flick my cigarette perfectly through the vapor cloud. It'll be fine. I would avoid I, I would all the atoms. Different, right? <laughs> yeah, I just frame perfect parry every atom. You know. So you know these things are highly refined. They're very volatile. They're more likely to do things like explode. So you want to be pretty safe in how you operate these things because exploding is bad. Mm. Very now, expensive I'll... inconveniences people. Yeah. Another problem is that there are a lot of these, which are almost universally owned by small fly-by-night operators oh, who contract. It's, it's like the guy. It's like you know the the guy who you call to like refill the gas station, and that yes. guy calls the guy who like has a boat. You know. Right. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. So they're owned by these small fly-by-night operators who contract with big oil companies in order to shield those big oil companies from liability. Allegedly. In this case. The ship was owned by Vector Shipping, transporting products for Caltex Philippines. Um, now, this company, Vector Shipping, was notable in that it didn't actually have a license to operate the ship, and they had understaffed it with no lookout or qualified master or chief engineer. Cool. Again, we, we love Saves sort of like highly centrally organized and regulated system of government. We sure uh, do, Alice, of November. God damn it. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the the thing here, the thing here is, I wasn't able to confirm this, but I very much suspected it from reading everything about it in the court documents. Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure this Vector shipping company owned exactly one ship, which was MT Vector. Hey, um, if it if it's working for a certain Anglo Dutch oil company, you could say it was a shell company. Uh, oh, uh, oh. 
Wow. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well if done. anyone wants my job, uh, <laughs> nope. right? To... Nope. <laughs> nope. Can't have it. Roz, you got to look out though, bud. <laughs> MV Tony Paz. Yes, sir. He's gone through the Philippines, through the various bays Channels and seas, and bumping around, Channels, yeah. Yeah. straits. They're about two thirds of the way over. They're in the Tablas Strait. Tablas. I, Tablas, probably Tablas. Yeah. yeah. Tablas between Marinduque and Mindoro. Uh, Ma sure. Marinduque. 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 Oh God. <laughs> yeah. I don't uh, know. I don't know. Cultural either. sensitivity at an all-time high. Doing very well. Um, MT Vector is of course coming the other way. Hmm. Mm. Mm. What? Well, um, um, I, I, I sense the Princess Alice disaster happening again in Filipino. The uh, now, the crew isn't worried about that, right? Because there's a capable seaman in charge of MV Doña Paz. Um, sure. Maybe. Mm. Uh, the apprentice mate is the capable seaman. Okay. So, so, so literally, like some kid, just a, like some a guy. kid, yeah. Uh, it's probably fine. It's probably fine. I mean, listen, if if kids can't step up to pilot vessels and shit when the time comes and like necessity well, the point. comes calling, why is Ender's Game a popular book? Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Should be fine. Should be fine. Yeah, you'd be be an adult or send you to the Hunger Games. It's another <laughs> young adult novel. Um, yeah, I think that's all the young adult novels there are. I yeah, think so. We're not, not going to talk about it anymore. Or I, whichever. So no, it's fine. Mm. Nope. Nope. J.K. Rowling can eat my butt. J.K. What? Who? What? Who? Well, no. that, if that person Unreal. existed, they could eat my butt. Uh, yeah. J J.K. The guy from Jamiroquai. Well, there's yes. about to be a there's about to be a series of unfortunate events. Oh, good books. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, see, this is the thing. I do the whole shell company thing. I get nothing. That one's really good. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, we're gonna. Ha is, is there gonna be some Artemis foul play? Oh, great. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No one understands me like the like the shitty books I read as an eight-year-old. I loved yeah, those books. Oh, they're really good, yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay, so The Apprentice Mate is having a young adult novel experience <laughs> where he has now been put in charge of the ship. Yeah, probably pretty novel. For sure. Yeah. Yes. So the crew went down to the rec room and started drinking. I mean, technically, if you crash the ship, every room's the right room. That's true. That's good point. <laughs> the captain was in his cabin watching a Betamax tape. Hold on, what, what year? Eighty-seven. Eighteen eighty-seven. Okay, that's a lot more normal. I was, I was expecting he was just like into like old modes of weird, like, yeah, yeah. He, he like was running a YouTube channel out of the captain's cabin. Big weird, like, big weird uh, tech moan guy. Yeah. 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 yeah exactly. The ship is otherwise. Sony doing... continued to sell Betamax cassettes until March of 2016. What? <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. I'm gonna need to know what's the like latest mainstream movie you could get on Betamax. Like, uh, what? If if I had a Betamax player, what could I? I mean, it made it made it 41 years. I don't. What was what came out in 2016? Uh, I don't know any movies. Mission Impossible 1, the like OG Mission Impossible with Tom Cruise, was the last movie released for, for Betamax, apparently. That's still not even bad. No. I mean I should the, the last horror the last film on VHS was Saw 2, so. Yeah. So other than this, the ship is doing great. Um it has cool. just a minor list from overloading. Um they ran out of food and drink. Uh, the toilets were overflowing. Uh, it was full of screaming kids. Oh, so it is an Avanti West Coast ferry. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> yes. Um, I, 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 meanwhile, you know, there's a fucking podcaster on there being like, uh, this cannot get any worse. This is <sighs> hell. Uh, I, I, I hope this fucking thing sinks and takes me with it. <laughs> Ask Ross how so, he did the cabot straight. One of the, one of the things here is... They're going through this busy shipping channel. It's dark. Yeah. Uh, the apprentice mate can't see anything. Yeah. A lot of this is conjecture and not like actual, you know, facts. Because what we really do know is that 
shortly after 10 p.m., the MV Donya Paz whacks into the MT Vector. What? The MT Vector catches fire and immediately explodes. Oh, like likely flies for it. You know, like yeah. tra- traditional thing for it to do in these circumstances, given yeah. that it's filled with uh, like uh, gasoline. Exactly. This explosion sets the Donya Paz on fire again. Um, oh boy. <laughs> and no officers, save for one, are at their posts. Yeah, they're all watching like different YouTube channels. Like, yeah. you, got, you got one guy watching Tech Moan, you got one guy watching Big Clive, you got one guy watching us. Um, mm. You know, uh, <laughs> pods. hopefully not watching this episode, they'd be able to avert the disaster. It's just, 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 just like naming YouTube channels we think yeah. are cool at this point. Um, so all hell breaks loose, right? Mm, and again, sure. we don't know too much exactly about what happened here. The fire rapidly consumes the overbooked ferry. Oh, I mean, I, again, this sounds fucking nightmarish immediately. Yes. The crew panicked. They never gave an order to evacuate. Even if they had, there wasn't a lot of time here, and there was no way to launch the lifeboats because the water was covered in gasoline, which was on fire. Oh, that's bad. Oh, yeah. You don't yeah. want to launch yeah, a lifeboat that. into a into a fire. Yeah. Because then your lifeboat's on fire, and yeah. Yeah. It, it's in where the fire is, and you kind of. I mean, wh- <sighs> the life jackets were all locked in closets. I mean, it, power it, went out almost instantly. What? Well, the thing is, you have a lot of light to see by from the fire. Um, uh, sure. But there was also <laughs> smoke. Oh, uh, well, see that, yeah. yeah, kind of. That's bad. Kind of, kind of ups and downs with the fire, really. Um, so, on the one hand, heavily... you, you can't use the lifeboats. On the other hand, the lifeboats would be useless. On the other, other hand, there's a lot of light from the fire. On the other, other hand, there's a lot of smoke. Uh, so, yes. you know, that that yeah. is how I would describe that. Mm-hmm. So people have yeah. to like run for their lives down pitch black corridors, which are all full of cots and uh, detritus. And to be uh, with you, you I, know, I just... wouldn't be good at this. I think no. I would. I yeah. would probably. Yeah. Like, I know we. You not normally say skill live. issue to yeah. these people dying. I, but, I would uh... say a lot of people turned out not to be good at this. I think well, it's a thing that sure. very few people are good at, you know? Yeah. Um, so there were... Of dumb luck. There were no lifeboats launched. Which, oh. yeah, again, if you had launched them, they would just catch fire. Mm. Um, you know, this was, this was a very difficult to survive disaster. Um, those few who managed it all jumped off the ship into the water, oh. uh, and many of them were seriously burned in the process. Because of the gasoline i mean the gasoline i I get to swim away from the ship as far and as quickly as possible underwater like you have to like get under the gasoline swim under it while it's burning and then like hope for the best basically yeah hope you don't run out of breath before the you know you get to the edge of the thing and because this is you know south pacific there's another problem no 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 yep no, it's no, no. Much like, no. much like this bin in IKEA, it's full of sharks. Oh, it is transgender after all. Um, yeah, fucking. <laughs> I I knew it was heading this way. I had yeah. in in my head the fucking USS Indianapolis. Um, these these fucking guys. What what's the Trump tweet, folks? You know, I uh, the, the, people are very mad at me for hating sharks, but don't worry, they'll be here long after we're gone. Um. <laughs> Trump's fucking anti-shark tweets. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Maybe he deserves to be president. <laughs> Trump shark tweets. Sorry, folks. I'm not a fan of sharks, and don't worry, they will be around long after we are gone. What well, is back when Discovery Wise Channel words. made you get hyped up about Shark Week every year? No, it's like I don't, I don't care about sharks either. Sh- sharks yeah. are last on my list, other than perhaps the losers and haters of the world. Fair enough. <laughs> President confirms Stormy Daniels' claim that he's terrified of sharks. Uh, she claims he said, "I hope all the sharks die." Again, <laughs> tough but fair. <laughs> I, I, I think I'm changing my Twitter bio now to I hope all the sharks die. It's, a, it's such perfectly, like, hater behavior. Um, so this is a very busy strait, and this accident was almost immediately spotted by the passing MS Don Claudio, right? Mm-hmm. right name. Which is this guy here. 
Hold on, I'm just um, doing the I hope all the sharks die thing. Yep, mm -hmm, gotcha. Um, which rushed to the accident scene. It arrived there almost instantly. They couldn't get close. At, they couldn't get it close to the accident. Because it's on because of the, the fire, you yeah, know. Yeah, because um... and they couldn't. No one could see anything, right? Right. Mm -hmm. They were like, "There's no lifeboats coming down. All we can do is pluck survivors from the water." Who are everyone who swam far enough horrifically right. burned. Oh right. yeah, I mean, yeah. just skin peeling off everything. Real nasty. Um. So and those who managed to get up close to. Uh, the Don Claudio were too weak to like climb up ropes or use a ladder or anything. Sure. So they actually had to like pull them up using nets. Oof. Ugh. Yeah. Again, that's probably not what you want, especially when all of your skin is not so attached anymore. Yes. Right. So that was all 26 survivors, 24 from Doña Paz and two from MT Vector were pulled directly from the water by this ship. Out of... <sighs> Out of four thousand. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. This this is a very bad accident. G generally speaking, like, I mean that that's in a kind of like horrifying middle ground because like a lot of the stuff we've talked about is just stuff that is like in like totally unsurvivable, like right. plane crashes or whatever, where it's like it doesn't it doesn't matter. You just get like mulched instantly. Yeah. Um. But th this is like oh, there's there's like just enough of a chance you know it's like horrifying it's like a couple right. people made it out yeah yeah um now rescue efforts here were further hampered because nobody had a radio of course yeah why would that be important you know yeah that's wait mm -hmm. it took eight hours for the ms don claudio to get to a port to alert the authorities jesus fuck. You, you're just fucking lying there with like 96% burns or whatever for like eight hours before anyone even like knows Oops. anything's happened. Yeah. Yes. Uh, when the authorities finally got to the scene of the accident, there was nothing there. Jesus. This is like, you know what it reminds me of? Is, is something that I been, have been wanting to do um, as an episode for a while. There's a few uh, like early-ish, like, post-Second World War aviation disasters in South America where, like, planes just go. They just disappear mm -hmm. in the Andes yeah. because, like, you know, they, they they crash for one reason or another and there's just no way of finding them again. Right. Uh, yeah. well, this, this bit is particularly grim. Uh, evidence soon became piling up in the nets of local fishing boats and washing up on beaches. Uh, there were so many corpses that it actually became a public health concern. They had to close down beaches. That's grim. There was no comprehensive official death toll initially, but it was assumed to be very high because the ship was very overloaded. Uh, Sulpicio Lines, of course, disputes this. Oh, of course. You know, yeah. for legal reasons. Um, I don't know. It's, it, it's also striking how the, like, just waiting for bodies to wash up thing, how reminiscent it is of, like, earlier maritime disasters right. like princess alice or like you know the fucking birkenhead or whatever there's like a bunch of these um just really really grim so all right what happened in the aftermath a big part of this investigation relied on pinning down a simple statistic how many people were actually on the ferry mm. fuck that scrub yeah no one could give a straight answer. Sulpicio insisted the ferry was at normal capacity, as indicated by the manifest. 1,493 passengers and 59 crew. Yeah, it's only like... Straight face, we don't know how many bodies. We, 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 there's only 683 bodies, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah to, to, to be like, there's, there's only like three times as many as it probably should have had after we put this back into service after it ran aground and burned down. Yeah. <laughs> Gotcha. Survivors described a much different scene with the dangerously overloaded vessel filmed with the teeming masses, right? Uh, all but five of the passengers who survived the wreck were not on the official manifest. And the more recognizable bodies that were washing up were also not on the passenger manifest. Yeah, the, the, the guy who washes up with his like EDC asbestos wallet that yeah. you know, <laughs> survives perfectly. That's not to mention it was official policy not to record non-paying children under four on the manifest. Mm. 
which is going to be again like a high number because this right. is this the, there were a lot of kids on this thing. So so Piccio's claim was clearly bunk. Yeah, of course. Right. Eventually, the media in Taklaban had to compile a list of missing people from surviving relatives. Eventually, there was a list of uh, 2,000 names published in the Philippine Daily Inquirer. Um, it wasn't until 1999 that the official estimated death toll was up to 4,385. I'm, I'm, I'm remembering Princess Alice again, of just like having to do best guesses and people doing things like perpetrating frauds because no one knows who really got killed and who survived right. and yeah yeah it's uh it is is a big awful. big forensic uh situation here you know you just can't there the, the the records were so bad that you can't tell who's who's alive who's dead mm. um so sending sending down divers to like shake down sharks for information exactly like how, um, many, how many people do you fucking eat <laughs> Let's get that big one. <laughs> Just grabbing the fastest shark by the fins and like shaking it. Who do you know here? <laughs> Who did you eat? Show me your teeth. Show me do, your teeth. Doing, <laughs> doing the like third degree police interrogation on a shark is that image is yeah. sort of like distracting me from some of the horrors. So, yeah. um, well, you'd be happy to know that the um the legal proceedings. Oh my favorite. Oh boy. Oh boy! Yeah, Who gets compensated favorite. for this? Who's at fault? It's time to enter the exciting world of torts. Mmm, delicious torts. Delicious torts, yes. Chocolate torts. Flourless mm. chocolate torts. You know, there's some guys with deep pockets here who could get sued. Yeah, I mean, that. like, if you take out the sort of, like, bullshit shell company intermediary, there's presumably, like, a... Uh, like an oil company. A whole oil company, yeah. They, they have a shitload of money. Um, Sulpicio probably has like a decent amount because they Lots have like, of money, yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, Sulpicio at this point controlled something like 40% of domestic Philippine shipping. Jesus, they said, yeah. well, the ship is insured for 25,000, I forget if this is Philippine dollars, Philippine pesos. I think it's actually pesos. Uh, it is a peso, yeah. So everyone with the family member that was on the manifest was going to get 20,000 Philippine pesos as payout. And if your relative was not on the manifest, well, that's that that's fake. You don't get anything. $357 US yes. today. Well, that's almost an Xbox. Mm -hmm. Is it? Xboxes are getting cheaper. Two ninety nine ninety nine for an Xbox Series S. Oh shit! Okay, so you could get an Xbox and a couple of games for your dead kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Assuming they were on the manifest, of course. Yep. Assuming they were Assuming on the manifest, on the or, manifest. They, or they like washed up with their asbestos wallet, or they're like you know yeah. skull tattoo. No, if they weren't on the manifest, Sulpicio didn't want to give them anything. Oh, okay. Maybe that guy just yeah. like fell into the strait where the ship sank by accident. Yeah, it could could have just happened, you know. Um, so the victims' families didn't like that. They staged a massive protest, um, you know, and, and eventually the Supreme Court of the Philippines had to step in. Um, and it's always good when a Supreme Court steps in. They're not about to do something completely horrible and asinine. Always good. I love yeah. to hear from Supreme Courts. And the question of blame is important here. Caltex Petroleum in the Philippines was a massive oil company, right? It had chartered MT Vector. Could they somehow be liable since they might have some duty to ensure the seaworthiness of the vessel. And the court decided in 2008, no. Oh, wow. The blame for the accident rested solely on a crappy little shipping company with one vessel, and they'd have to bear the burden of the payout, which means I don't think anyone got any compensation. Um, as as far as I know, this would also be the case in Scottish uh, law yeah. of delicts, and probably therefore English tort law. I uh, I'm gonna get yelled at because I'm gonna get the case wrong because it's been years since I did my delicts exam. But I want to say my authority for this is Transco PLC against Stockport something, but I could be wrong. Um, well, that's pretty good. Hey, I mean, listen, I, it's sometimes the stuff just lodges in your head, and it may well be entirely wrong. Uh, don't tell me in the comments. Oh, they're gonna, don't worry. Yeah, yeah. That was fucking dope. 
Mm -hmm. You assholes. So you may think that um, this uh, the shipping line, Sulpicio, they'd have been like, well, this, there was this horrific loss of life. We need to improve some of our internal procedures, make no, sure Ross, none of this happens again. Um, you know, I host the, even I host we, the you know, show. They're, they're sort of, they're sort of like, you know, shocked into sobriety by this entire situation. Here's the thing: why, why would they when like nobody ha Watch faces any real consequences right. here? And uh, you're correct. The answer to that is no. <laughs> Here's a Wikipedia article you don't want to have about you. List of maritime disasters involving the Philippines Span Asia Carrier Corporation. Oh my god. <laughs> which they it's it's a it's not a super long one, but there's a lot of big death tolls. Um Oh, they changed the name though. I mean that's how you really yeah, they, know they that, did. like there's consequences. Oh, look at the fucking rust streaming off of what is that? This is actually Sunflower? a flower. Sunflower. This is when the uh, MV Donna Maryland uh, was owned by a Japanese ferry line, but this was also later sold to the Philippines. Gotcha. Um, Sulpicio loses two more big ships. Donna Maryland here in 1988. That kills 300 people. And then down here is Princess of the Orient, uh, capsized in a typhoon in 1999, 1998, killing 150 people. For why whatever are reason, why are you sailing in a typhoon? Don't do that. They, they, uh, you know when they're gonna be. Well, you know, uh, people got to get to work. Uh, yeah. I guess so. I have, I have no idea. Um, that's a different disaster. Mm. Uh, finally, in two thousand eight, when the Supreme Court decision is coming down that says they're not responsible, MV Princess of the Stars sank in Typhoon Feng Shen. 814 dead and missing you, you, and the f you gotta stop sailing in the fucking typhoons boys you, yeah. I, I don't know what to tell you and the philippines board of marine inquiry finally suspended sulpicio's license to carry passengers uh, it's, it, you know it's like they always say right fool me three times three, shame on four, you four times That's fool, fool times me four even. times shame 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 on me yeah thus uh Justice was served ish, I guess. Uh -huh. they, they should ever, uh, they should go to the houses of the executives of this line and. <laughs> or the shoes, yes. or whatever. Yeah, whatever you guys feel is appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, Sulpicio Lines, which is now named Philippine Span Asia Carrier Corporation, uh -huh. is appealing this decision, but they do not currently run passenger service. This happened but in 1987. Is... Here's the thing: someone Jeez, still does, people. right? Like, because because like the islands have not changed, the movement between them has not changed. Uh, yes. Someone still has to run a bunch of ferries, and statistically, I know that they're going to be trying to do it on the cheap. So the same shit's happening. It's got to be. Yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely like, um, I mean, granted, the last two ships were sunk by um, uh, what should we call it? Mysterious acts of God's right? love. Yeah. 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 So this is this is just uh, uh, you know a question of not sailing in heavy weather, but uh, you know th th this company just had this insane safety record and was allowed to keep operating for two decades. It's it's you know there's well, massive I mean... failures at all level of administration here. Yeah, you you, right. you get sort of like. A nine eleven and a bit's worth of casualties out of yes. um, out of this one, and then a nothing happens. Yeah, well, I mean, well, since since um six since uh, October seventh, we're now we now have proportional nine elevens. So I think that's this is actually significantly more proportional nine elevens for the Philippines. All right, let's do some maths here. Population of the Philippines. <laughs> All right, the population of the Philippines is 113.9 million, so we say roughly a third of the US, give or take. Um, and it had uh it's, and it's it was like 1.1911s. So it would be like three and a third 911s. Yeah, that sounds about back right to the, me. Back of the envelope, this is three and a third 911s. Yeah, I mean, you know, what if what if uh what if nine eleven actually was an inside job and just no one did anything about it? That this is sort mm -hmm. of what happened here. 
Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> just like... Well, 9 11 was just like extremely negligent. Like, yes. United like hired Muhammad Atta and he like flew the planes into the fucking World Trade Center. And then United yes. were like, sorry about this, here is $300. Go buy an Xbox. <laughs> do, do, yeah. You cannot sue us. Jesus Christ. Yeah. This, what, this is. I, mm. this depressing is, this is news. Depressing yeah. episode. Yeah. That's what we're here for. Yep. We're here to provide you lots of extremely bleak content. I, um, I, I already legitimately suffered a like workplace psychiatric injury doing this podcast, doing the fucking prions one. Like I, I still have like anxiety disorder problems about that. Um, and 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 now on top of this, you you hit me with a fucking depression beam. You know, that's what we're here for. Getting, uh, getting well, there's your problem syndrome. <laughs> I'm getting work woman's comp is what I'm guessing. That's that's yeah. I don't. You, 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 you guys are, you guys are paying for my therapy. You know, uh, make him do it. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. You, the, the the Patreon subscribers yeah. are paying for my therapy, which we thank yeah. you for. Yeah, thank you. So, wh what did we learn today? Uh, don't... When you find someone who's negligent, go to their house and beat them to death with their own shoes. I, I think my answer is simply the word "don't." Yeah, just d d d don't, <laughs> don't do that. We've learned nothing. We just, well, because there's there's nothing to learn. What we could have yeah. learned was like extremely obvious, like right. hold yeah. hold uh, corporations responsible for their acts and omissions. Yes. Uh, like we could do the names and addresses song. Yeah, that's true. doing the Animaniacs song, but uh, like <laughs> countries of the world, but it's like names and addresses of executives of uh, of of this company. Yeah, it's it's just uh, it's it's just it's kind of bleak. I mean, it also relates well, even in the goddamn news talking about East Palestine. You know, the the railroad hasn't really been meaningfully held accountable. The whole industry has, and you know, here we also see, you know, twenty years for them to decide actually the ferry line isn't accountable. Not you know, it's uh. It's like, you know, this whole system is, uh, this whole system is, uh, fundamentally broken. Yeah, of course, um, and it's, it's fundamentally broken for, like, historical reasons, right, too. Like, yeah. if you want the Philippines to be a country that has a judiciary and has a, a government that, are, like, allows the meaningful regulation of shipping, uh, and, like, consequences for people who, who break it and, like, kill a bunch of people, then, you know, the reasons why it doesn't are... Like a history of colonial exploitation that kind of creates inequalities that persist to this day is why. Um, yeah, good old, uh, good old. Uh, the purpose of the system is what it does, right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's all fucking Douglas MacArthur's fault. I'm pretty certain. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Well, we have a segment on this podcast called Safety Third. <laughs> Three slides for safety third this time. Yes. Hello, Roz, November, Yay Liam, Devin, and slash or possible guests slash guests. No. <laughs> I like I've got a recent. Guess. <laughs> I've got a recent safety third for you, where I was both the idiot and the somewhat intelligent one. Oh, a, I the work Stan a... Rogers song I like, and another weirder Stan Rogers song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I work in the world of museums, specifically science museum, in, a, in a sur an absurd space where bizarre maintenance requirements and procedures collide with the oddest people possible, all covered with the delightful penny-pinching blanket of non-profit life. Cool. I can relate. <laughs> the museum I work at has a planetarium. We replaced the lamp projectors with LED projectors as part of a recent series of major changes and upgrades. Still thinking about the tweet that's like, I work at a planetarium, and when the, uh, the Earth came on with the thing, this is the Earth, one of the kids booed. <laughs> <laughs> Fair good. enough, honestly. <laughs> yeah. For a few reasons, the main planetarium operator was let go at the same time, and my department was tasked with getting the planetarium cleaned up and organized. Yeah, just fix up the planetarium. You know, it's like we bought a zoo, except it's a planetarium. The former operator could be quite accurately described as very devoted, but quite odd and a bit of a hoarder. Uh... 
as we were cleaning the space, we found out that instead of disposing of burned out projector lamps, he'd kept every single dead lamp. Uh, Listen, sometimes, okay. sometimes you, you get the autism and it hurts your feelings to throw them away, right? Yes. These aren't just big light bulbs where the inside it's a vacuum and you only need to really worry about broken glass when you break them. Large old theater and cinema projectors tend to use xenon arc lamps. See figure A. This is Look figure cool. A, I Look believe. very like, um, I don't know, industrial. Yeah. Where fused quartz glass contains xenon gas at potentially up to 30 atmospheres or 440 pounds per square inch. These are effectively very small pressure bombs that have built-in shrapnel. Built-in glass shrapnel. Yeah. Put a pin in that. I don't think I want to put I, a pin I, in that. Yeah. <laughs> uh. We don't know how long he'd been hoarding lamps, but I've found dated boxes going back at least 15 years. Mm-hmm. When, he, when we finished cleaning, we had about 125 of these lamps just sitting on a pallet, needing to go somewhere. I mean, sometimes you lose the contact details for your lamp disposal guy. Yeah. Sometimes you think the the lamps have personalities and you don't want to like get rid of them. Set them right. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Being as they're the pressure vessels, thing. yeah. To safely dispose of them, we needed to break the glass to release the pressure. Oh uh, no! Sorry, we we needed to do a kind of planetarium operation sailor hat. Right. Destroy the <laughs> destroy the village to save it. Yes, I'm I'm familiar. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. After a discussion about the cost of the proper tool versus the <laughs> fact that we were only going to use it once due to the LED upgrades, my boss uttered the words, no person wants to hear. Can't we just make a tool to break them ourselves? No, oh, dipshit. Boy. Can't, can't we just drop the like Acme 16 ton weight on them on the pallet? <laughs> At this point, you know, maybe you just want to throw them in a lake. <laughs> it's well, a safe and legal thrill, you know. Yeah. <laughs> You're about to get some really bright electric eels. Yeah. I was effectively tasked with the impromptu explosive ordnance disposal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I, I'm not the I'm not the step EOD tech. I'm just the EOD tech who stepped, stepped up. up. Good I show, found actually. A, I found a method of breaking them online. See figure B, a YouTube oh video. Uh, don't do that. Yeah, I and found I this built... guy called FPS Russia. <laughs> <laughs> cue, cue the, uh, the, you have to do the this pickup truck door the just going right past him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I made the rig involved. To make things go smoother, I started removing the bulbs from their housing. Figure C is on the next slide. Uh-huh. Um, which I, yeah. I assume it's this one. Yeah. Because I'm not a complete idiot, I was wearing as much protective gear as I could. Leather gloves, long sleeves, masks, full face shield. Not quite a full EOD suit, but you make do with what you got. Yeah, I was wearing my Don't World like that War... sense. Don't I, like I was that wearing sense. my World War One trench armor. Right. Yes. As I pulled the lamps out, I gently placed them in a five-gallon bucket with a piece of heavy plastic on top as a blowout panel. Smart. When I had about 25 lamps dehoused, I gently took the bucket over to where I had the smashing rig. I took the plastic cover off, reach in still with full PPE, gingerly start to pull a lamp up, and shit immediately goes sideways. That tracks, bud. Near as I can tell, one lamp shifted and fell on another lamp. Which cracked ever so slightly, and physics took of over. Pressure release. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're just doing Cra- like nuclear fission, but for glass at that yeah. point. <laughs> the physics took over. The cracked lamp went boom, and a chain re- detonation started as the glass and metal shrapnel cracked all the other lamps in the bucket, including the one I was holding. I felt the wave of pressure hit my hand as the bucket immediately became a giant shotgun of shattered glass and metal rockets out of the bucket. Fuck. Once, once the explosion finishes, I check to make sure I'm not down any fingers or spurting blood, quickly shout, I'm okay, and pull my hand slash arm out of the blast zone. Thank the various deities for protective gear. As the only damage to myself is a bunch of redness from the pressure wave, 
some minor scrapes, and a bruised ego. A TBI, a traumatic bulb <laughs> injury. The fact that I'd just been appointed to the safety committee was not lost on myself or my boss, and my punishment for being a dumbass was cleaning up all the shrapnel and having to smash the rest of the lamps outside in the cold. I just up ended there. up smashing them with a the sledgehammer. Sounds kind of fun, actually. Yeah, it does. Like those Mexican guys who like have um, like uh, weak explosives strapped to sledgehammers and then just hit the ground with them. <laughs> Moral of the story is proper PPE will save your life and don't put a bunch of breakable pressure vessels in enclosed spaces. Mm. Love the podcast. Keep up the good work. Thanks for many hours of engineering disasters. If I ever run into any of you, drinks are on me. Fantastic. Excellent. Thanks so much. Uh, mm. I, I'm I'm so glad that the World War One trench armor leather jerkin ass situation <laughs> protected you. Yeah. So, uh, that was safety third. Shake oh, hands with danger. Hands with danger. Our, our next episode will be on Chernobyl. Does anyone have any commercials before we go? I think we're good, to be honest. Um, yeah, looks good too. It's 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 fashion's coming. It, yeah. it, it it is. It might be out by the time this comes out. That's Probably true. will be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, if you want to donate to uh, Railroad Workers United, that link will be in the description. Absolutely. Cool. Become a sustaining member today. <laughs> Right, we did right. it. We recorded the everybody. podcast. The, the workflow podcast. is fixed. Yes. Yay. Okay, good. I was hoping to have a shorter one so that we did not um we did not uh uh send uh Devin to the torment nexus. Still recording, <laughs> bud. Oh yeah, that's a good point. <laughs>